This is an early 1970s Teledyne Packard Bell. It's actually a rebrand. It's just a General Electric color hybrid tabletop. This set's going to be the subject of an experiment that I've wanted to do for some time. The CRT is weak in this and the flyback failed. At least what I remember is the flyback smoking and black goo dripping out of it all over the place. What I want to try and do is remove the secondary winding of the flyback and replace it with a solid state tripler. See if we could get the set to work. I don't really care if we trash the set. You can see that the phosphor is actually kind of dark. It's more of a dark gray where it should be a light gray indicating it's a really high hour set. So like I said, this is just a GE General Electric rebrand and these GE sets at one time were everywhere and they are so extinct now. I think a GE tabletop portable color set with tubes in it is probably about one of the hardest of this style to actually find. 1C662, 620. WL meaning walnut. This cabinet's made of high impact plastic. We should try that. I bet if you drop it, it would not be high impact. It's just a, it's like a cafe car. It's just a rebrand. Packard Bell wasn't making it. They needed to have this in their lineup, so they contracted with General Electric to put their own model number and print their name on it. Here's a look at the guts. Got some real hours on it. Look at how dark that is. Someone really enjoyed this. But yeah, in the early 70s, this style of set were super common. And it uses the, the 3DS3 uh, high voltage rectifier tube that's got the lead jacket on it and does not have the, doesn't need the cover the x-ray cover on the flyback cage. This flyback looks like it might be a replacement. It looks like someone's done some work on it there. A wire burned off. This might actually be very difficult to do what I want. I want to take this winding off the outside and replace it with a tripler. And a tripler probably won't give us as much high voltage as the flyback would. You would still need some windings on this thing. Because you'd probably, you probably want 25,000 volts. And you're going to have about 6,000 times 3 with a tripler. This uses the same type of color demodulation as a portacolor, the GE compactron filled. And yes, they did make tube sets and hybrid sets up into the late 70s. Uh, the horizontal output, where is it? It's over here. Big clunky thing, 26HU5. So let's check the CRT. Alright, this CRT is junk. That's cut off with all the cutoffs all the way up. Look at look at how dead this is. That's the movement on blue. Look at the movement on red. There's a movement on green. So this CRT's junk, so we really don't care about this set. Uh, next thing we're going to do is power it up and look at the the plate current of that tube and see what the flyback does. It's funny, I remember this thing smoking and dripping 
goo out and I don't see that. Maybe it's a different set I'm thinking of. Got my milliamp meter here. I really think I grabbed the wrong set. I believe I have three sets like this. And I remember a black tar type substance leaking out of the set even through the bottom onto the ground. But here we go. Uh, I'm going to apply power here. Let's see, where's the uh, power switch? There we go. Eh, there they go. There now they're glowing. So we're looking for probably. I don't know, depending on what the B plus is on this, 200 milliamps, something like that. It's very possible I have an open Chinese clip lead too. Oh no, there it goes. No, that came right up. I must have grabbed the wrong set here. Right on 200 milliamps, you can hear that tube arcing. It's humid today, so... About the emissions you would expect. Absolutely dead. Oh, I'm sure that's good for the camera. Crap. Freaking static. Yeah, that's pretty dead. I must have grabbed the wrong set. I'm going to let it run for a few minutes. But I, I definitely remember a bunch of black tar leaking out. All right, I must have grabbed the wrong set here because this thing's just cruising along right at 200 milliamps and nothing. So uh, it must be the set with the good CRT in it that smoked the flyback. I believe these General Electrics are designed so you just change this part. See how the core is bolted to the can? So you, you could just, I don't know how you get it apart, but I, I don't think you change that thing up there. Maybe the can comes into pieces, and then you just replace this donut here. You don't change the whole core on these GEs. So now to try and locate the set that I want to do the, do the experiment on. I think that's a replacement flyback. Check this out. I'm going to power this up. Watch this little thing right here when the high voltage comes up. I'm going to unplug the power. I think I made a mistake here. I think I sort of identified the wrong set that I remember with the bad flyback, which is what this video was supposed to be about. I think it's a Sylvania. And I don't know why it was in my head that it was one of these GE slash Packard Bells, but anyway, I got three of these things and I've dug them all out. They're all identical. Uh, I pulled the schematic, they're from 1974. And here's the second one, and I have this one labeled, the CRT labeled strong. And you can see this one, this one looks like they sprayed the flyback with Corona dope. Is that what this is? This red paint? I don't see how that's going to stop anything, but hey, may as well hose it down. Anyway, let's check the CRT on this one. 
You know, when these flybacks go bad, they usually a big visual footprint. I, I clearly remember a set I had with black tar and a burning smell, and the black tar was dripping out of the bottom of the set, getting on everything. Uh, it had to be the Sylvania, but we'll go through all three of these. Look at this one. And this is not a new set. This is on set cutoff. Look at that. I'm going to go to test. Pegged. Look at that. So let's set the cutoff. not getting it right on here but you're supposed to just go one small increment and then test this is when they started to go to the RCA dark cathode you can see how kind of dull that is it's not gonna light up the back wall these lasted a lot longer this is when CRTs started to last forever okay we're doing plate current on this one and uh, yeah I'm just doing this just to get a kind of a baseline on these things the other one was right about 200 and I think the schematic says 215 there we go Oh yeah, it's there. So this one, although it has some hours on it, it, uh, it it's definitely a good one. And this one just says, for my records, this one says strong CRT. So, yeah, this is a good one. I'm going to put this one and the one with the dead CRT side by side so you can see the phosphor color difference. This one I wrote new on. Let's open this one and see what a new one looks like. Alright, this is the one that says new. And let's see. Yeah, it must have been the Sylvania. So is that a GE horizontal output tube? It is. So this... This might be very low hour. Let's see. That's this compactron on it. The damper says compactron. This looks like it has all original tubes. Yeah. Yeah, this is low hour, all right. Showroom fresh. No modification to the flyback, no Corona dope, no extra wires added. Yeah, it's got to be the Sylvania. Sorry, I flubbed this video up. Yeah, no, it has some hours on it because look at the, the dirt attracted to the focus divider resistor there. So it's not new, but it's it's minty fresh. So do the CRT and the okay. Here's the cutoff on this one. Just pegged all three meters pegged. If I go to test, all three meters slammed. So let's go back to cutoff. Let's bring it down to our set point here. Okay. Test. That's what a good CRT looks like. I'm really not taking a lot of time and lining these all up exactly where they should be, but 
That's what a good CRT looks like, right there. On the previous one, when I turned it on, I heard a big degaussing hit, you know, the big boom, but this one, not. Ooh. Some high voltage squealing and arcing here. Under 200 milliamps on this one. Wow, is this one bright? Not a lot of not a lot of activity from the tuner. Oh 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 oh! It's not new. It is not new. All right. It's good, but it's not new. So I don't know how much this is well. This is going to show, but if you look at that CRT, that's the weak one. It's very dark. If you look at this one, it's very light. Look at that color. Look at that color. There's a huge, hugely noticeable difference when you have them next to each other. I can't even start to guess how many thousands and thousands of hours this must have on it. All right, well, there's an inadvertent look at three 1974 Packard Bell Teledyne made by General Electric 1C620. One of them, you can see the phosphor's actually gotten dark. It's got so many hours on it. I don't think these tubes are rebuildable when they get that baked.